Hey guys, I am the Comics Kid 2099. My second video that I ever did on this channel was a video where I talked about five comic book series or mini series that deserved to be collected in trade paperback. I talked about how I really only read trade paperbacks these days, or I will read single issues that I already own, but I do not go out and seek out single issues anymore. I used to do that, I don't do that anymore. I still prefer to only read trades. Even if I own the single issues, I would rather read it in trade, but sometimes I will make exceptions. And I recently was thinking about that video and then I realized there's probably a lot more comic books out there that deserve to be collected in trade that I did not cover in that video. So I decided to do a Mark II for that video. This is 10 more comic books, either ongoings or miniseries, that deserve to be collected in trade and for whatever reason have not been. I tried my best to make this be even Marvel and DC, so I believe there's 5 Marvel and 5 DC on this list. And I'll just go ahead and get right into it without any further ado. First is Peter David's run on the Hulk. Actually, the last half of Peter David's run on the Hulk. He started his run around issue 331, I believe, and the Hulk Visionaries, I believe there's seven volumes, collect all the way up to issue 396. His run went all the way up to issue 467. So from issue 397 to 467, none of that has been collected in trade. I don't know why. I don't know if the second half of his run is not as critically acclaimed as the first half. Peter David's run on the Hulk is one of those runs when you hear someone talk about the great runs on the Hulk, his name usually comes up. In fact, his name is the name that made Hulk what it is. Before that, some people had some successful Hulk stuff, but really Peter David is the guy that you think about who made the Hulk popular. And it's really, really baffling to me that only half of his run is available in trade paperbacks. I have not bothered reading the Hulk Visionaries because I don't want to get to Volume 7 and be like, okay, I'm ready for more, and Marvel Comics does not put out more volumes. For whatever reason, sometimes they will just stop in an arbitrary moment. And you know what, as I will get to in the rest of this video, Marvel and DC are about as bad as each other in this regard. Sometimes people will say, well, in this particular thing, DC is a lot worse than Marvel, and in this particular thing, Marvel is a lot worse than DC. Here, they are both about as bad, in that sometimes they will just completely ignore the existence of a really successful series, and for no reason at all, they will not collect it. Peter David's run on the Hulk, I've heard nothing but good things about that run. I have no idea why there are 70 issues of this run that have not been collected. Next on my list, also from Marvel, is the rest of the New Mutants series, specifically issues 62 through 85. The first 61 issues of this series were written by Chris Claremont, as well as Marvel graphic novel issue 4, I believe, that starred the New Mutants and introduced several of them to the Marvel Universe. All of that has been collected in the New Mutants Classics volumes, I believe. It's either New Mutants Classics or New Mutants Visionaries. Those have all been collected, and if you want to read all of that, it's pretty easy to get a hold of that stuff. A couple of those volumes might be out of print, but in my opinion, it's easier to get those out of print volumes than it is to hunt down the back issues that are not collected. I've talked about this before. For me, back issue hunting is not really an option because my local comic book shops, they have never really had a lot of back issues, so it's always been kind of hard for me to read a run unless it's collected in trade. And for some reason, we've got the first 61 issues of this series, and then from issue 86 all the way up to issue 100, all of that has been collected in a few different books. It's just that middle 20 or so issues right there in the middle that are not done by Chris Claremont or Rob Liefeld, for some reason, those have not been collected. I think all of these issues were written by Louise Simonson. I know she took over the book after Chris Claremont left. She's, in my opinion, a better creator than Rob Liefeld. She's more creative. She's a better writer. I don't really understand why Rob Liefeld's stuff on the end of this series has been collected, but for some reason, Louise Simonson's stuff has not. Next on my list is the post-Peter David X-Factor run. Peter David was on X Factor for about 20 or 30 issues. His entire run is collected in four visionary volumes. And then starting with issue 90, this series is not collected in anything. So the entire first 89 issues of this series are collected in one way or another, either in essential volumes or the visionary volumes from Peter David's run. Then from issue 90 to issue 149, 60 issues of this run 
are not collected. Now, it could be that I'm such an X-Men fan and that I'm one of the only people who would actually like to read this later stuff, but in my opinion, the issues where Forge was leading the team and we had mostly supervillains on the team like Sabretooth and Mystique, in my opinion, that was some really good comics, and I don't know why all of that is being ignored. If you look at all of the X-Factor stuff that has existed since the 80s, most of it has been collected, with the exception of this 60-issue run and then, I believe, a four-issue miniseries in the early 2000s. It's really glaring when this is the only stuff with the name X-Factor on the title that has not been collected. Up next on my list is the rest of the Weapon X series from 2002. This series was written by Frank Thierry. It lasted 28 issues, but only the first 13 issues have been collected. There were two trade paperbacks. The first one was called The Draft, I believe, and the second one, if I'm not mistaken, was called The Underground. This series, only half of it has been collected. I really enjoyed this series. It mostly featured C and D list characters that weren't really being used anywhere else, but I kind of thought that was part of the charm. I also was really engaged in the story. We had a lot of background politics sort of playing around. We had characters who were going to be betraying other characters. I really enjoyed a lot of that, and in the first 13 issues, that stuff was only being set up. We didn't actually get to see the payoff for any of that. And I know probably nobody remembers this series, and even fewer people are wanting it to be collected, but I am one of the people who would definitely be the first in line to be buying this series in trade if you were to finish off the rest of this series. I absolutely think that would be a really good investment for X-Men completists like myself. And the last one on my list from Marvel is the 1990s Guardians of the Galaxy series. This one, more than any of the others from Marvel, there is absolutely no excuse why this entire series is not collected. We are about to have a Guardians of the Galaxy movie in a few months. Why do we not have every Guardians of the Galaxy comic book easily available for everyone to go and read? After people who do not read comics go and see this trailer and they're like, wow, that looks really interesting. I want to read more about these guys. And then they find out they really can't. All they can actually read is the Brian Michael Bendis stuff that is in trade because the Abnett and Lanning stuff is insanely out of print and this series from the 90s is not even available in trade paperback. The only other stuff that they can read is this team's appearances from the 1960s. I think all of their appearances from the 60s are collected in two hardcovers, and those are usually a little pricier than I would like, but at least they are making an effort. At least they did put the earliest appearances from this team in hardcover so that people can go and read those. I just wish that they would go the extra mile and collect the 1990s series. This series lasted 62 issues, and the last time I checked, the first six issues are all that's been collected, and that was put out in the early 1990s. As far as I know, I don't think that trade paperback has been made readily available since then. I have never seen that trade anywhere in any store. I've only heard about it online. I would really like to see some really thick, really inexpensive, visionary-type volumes for this entire series. Put out about 10 volumes, maybe. Six or 10 volumes have eight or nine issues per volume. I think that would sell really well, especially when you've got a Guardians of the Galaxy movie coming out in a few months. And on the DC side of things, I have just as many. I have five choices that I would like to see collected in trade. The first one is a miniseries, Superman, The Last Family of Krypton. This one only came out a few years ago, like 2010, something like that. I am really surprised that this series was not collected. It's understandable, it's at least slightly understandable, when you have something from before the era when trade paperbacks were a really huge thing and it hasn't been collected yet. That's kind of understandable. It really blows my mind, though, when you have a comic book run or a particular storyline or a miniseries that came out while comic books were heavily put into trade, while that was a huge thing, and for some reason this particular thing is not in trade. This miniseries is a good example. Right here, we're looking at a cover that, if I'm not mistaken, that cover is by Alex Ross. This was also a concept that was really interesting to me. When it was coming out, I was saying, I will definitely pick that up in trade. Here we are, three or four years later, it has not been put into trade, and I am pulling my hair out asking why. 
I was even interested in this before I had my renewed interest in Superman. Before I went and saw the Man of Steel movie last year, I wasn't a huge fan of Superman. Now I am more of a fan of Superman. But even before I was a fan of Superman last year, I was really interested in seeing this miniseries and reading it. Sadly, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to because for some reason, DC is very hesitant to collect stuff from right around before the New 52. There are two or three series that I am not mentioning on this list that were going on right when the New 52 started and for whatever reason, DC decided not to collect the final storylines from those series. And I'm afraid that this miniseries is going to be kind of like that, where DC is just going to pretend like it never happened and they are never going to collect it. Which is a shame because this was a premise that I was really interested in and I'm afraid I'm never going to get to read this series because it's really a chore for me to try and find all of the issues of a particular storyline or a run or whatever. Up next is Doom Patrol, specifically the stuff from after Grant Morrison's run. On the 1980s, late 1980s, early 90s Doom Patrol series, Grant Morrison started in issue 19 and his run lasted all the way up to issue 63. That series lasted another 20 or so issues, from 64 all the way to issue 87. I would really like to see the rest of this series collected. I would also like to see the previous 18 issues before Grant Morrison's run collected. I'm really just interested in the Doom Patrol, and sadly, not a lot of this run is available in trade. You can read some of the Silver Age Doom Patrol in the Showcase volumes, or the Archives volumes if you're willing to put out a lot more money, but for the most part, the Doom Patrol, a lot of their stuff is not really easily available in trade, and that's disappointing to me. Me, and I was thinking that we were going to get some of the post Grant Morrison Doom Patrol collected because starting I think last year we were starting to see some of his post Animal Man collected and I was thinking okay they're gonna do the same thing with Doom Patrol probably not it occurred to me later oh the reason that they're doing that is because Animal Man is part of the new 52 and it's really popular with everybody so they're trying to put out more Animal Man it's not that they're just attacking Grant Morrison stuff and trying to put more stuff out there I'm really wishing that they would do that. I would definitely buy this. If it's not clear to you guys, I am not a fan of the New 52, and I am much more interested in reading stuff from before the New 52 than I am reading the current stuff. So if they were to put out a trade paperback of, say, the post-Grant Morrison run by Rachel Polak on Doom Patrol, I would buy that before I would read, say, the current Animal Man stuff from the New 52. This next one is kind of like the Guardians of the Galaxy from Marvel Comics. It is a no-brainer, and for some reason DC has completely ignored this from its inception. I am talking about Young Justice, written by Peter David. This entire series is almost impossible to find. It lasted 55 issues, and there were two trade paperbacks that were put out. The first one, I believe, was called A League of Their Own, and the other one was the collection of the Sins of Youth crossover, which I think happened outside of the Young Justice series, but it really heavily focused on the Young Justice team. For some reason, both of these are highly out of print, and every time that I've looked them up online, they are always really expensive and much higher than I would be willing to pay. I do not understand why this series remains uncollected, especially when, for two years, DC Comics had a cartoon series called Young Justice. Why would you ignore the source material for that series? Why wouldn't you really market the crap out of this comic book series and say, look, the comic book that that really popular cartoon was based on is right here and you can buy it. Now, I myself hated the Young Justice cartoon, but I would be all over a series of trade paperbacks collecting Peter David's Young Justice. This series, from what little I've read, it was quirky when it needed to be, it was tragic when it needed to be, it was dramatic when it needed to be. This series had everything, and I think because it was so good, the few issues that I have read, because it was so good, that is why DC likes to pretend like it didn't exist, because DC likes to build its company on crap, as we've seen since the New 52 started. Next on my list is Superman Batman Generations 3. This was a 12 issue limited series and the only reason that I have this on my list is that the first two Generations miniseries have already been collected. Now it was a slightly different format. Generations 1 was a four issue miniseries where each issue was roughly double sized. Generations 2 was also a four issue miniseries and was about the same length as Generations 1. Generations 3 was 12 normal sized issues so it's slightly longer. 
but for some reason, this series is being ignored by DC Comics. I have no idea why they would put the first two minis in trades, and then they would completely ignore this one. Now, in my opinion, Generations 2 was significantly a step down from Generations 1, and it's entirely possible that Generations 3 would be even worse. But you know what? I want to read it and make that call for myself. I don't want DC to say, oh, you don't want to read that. Even though we published it, you really don't want to read it. You would rather read the new 52. No, I would rather read what I want to read, and for some reason, DC is trying to pretend like this thing didn't exist. And you know what? Even if the story is bad, even if this miniseries was even worse than Generations 2, at least it has John Byrne artwork. John Byrne artwork is gonna sell books, and I don't understand why DC is averse to making money like that. And the last one on this list should not be a surprise if you have been watching my videos over the last couple of days. Just the other day, I did a re-review on Teen Titans games. I want all of Marv Wolfman's Teen Titans stuff to be collected. Marv Wolfman had a massive run on the Teen Titans franchise. And saying massive run, that really kind of does it an injustice. So let me go ahead and paint a picture for you of just how much stuff that this guy wrote and how much of it is easily available for people to read. You had 59 issues of the new Teen Titans. Then you had 93 issues of the new Titans. Then you had 14 annuals, only one of which he did not write. Six issues of of Teen Titans Spotlight, four issues of Tales of the Teen Titans, 12 out of 24 issues of Team Titans, 56 out of 64 issues of Deathstroke the Terminator, including annuals, Teen Titans Games, which was 144 pages or roughly six and a half issues. That roughly totals out to be 250 issues of everything that's related to Teen Titans from Marv Wolfman. Now to compare that, Chris Claremont on everything that's kind of related to the X-Men franchise, he wrote 324 issues. Almost everything that Chris Claremont wrote in his 16 years on X-Men initially, all of that is collected in trade. If you look at everything that Marv Wolfman did, almost none of it is collected in trade. You have the Judas Contract, but that's out of print now. You have the Terror of Trigon, that's also out of print. You have two trade paperbacks that are relatively easy to find, Terra Incognito and Who is Donna Troy. Both of those are fairly inexpensive, and if you wanted to find those, you could do so easily. Then you also have three Omnibuy, one of which is really out of print, and if you wanted to buy it, it would cost you like $200 for like 400 pages. The other two Omnibuy are fairly inexpensive in comparison, but again, you're going to be missing one of the Omnibuy unless you want to put down $200 for it. And then also you've got the Archives editions, which once again, one of those is really expensive, so you're going to be missing a chunk from his run. And even if you get all of this stuff, the Omnibuy or the Archives or all four of the trade paperbacks that are available, you're still missing like 200 issues of Teen Titans related stuff that has not been collected. I understand that it took Marvel like 10 years to get all of Chris Claremont's X-Men stuff put into trade. I would be perfectly fine with DC taking that long to do it as long as they actually did it. I would like to see some form of collection of all of the Teen Titans stuff put out there and not instantly go out of print and be like $200 to buy. I would really, really like to see something kind of along the Visionaries line or the Classics line from Marvel. Something that's like eight or nine issues per volume, maybe make them paperback. I would really, really be all over that. This run on the Teen Titans is one of those things when you hear people talk about the best stuff from Teen Titans, you hear people talk about Marv Wolfman's run. And I think it is a disservice to the entire comic book industry that this stuff is still not available for people to go out and read. And that's all I have. 10 more series that have not been collected that should be collected. Do you guys agree with my list? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below, and I will be back tomorrow with a different kind of video. So until then, I will see you guys later. Have a great day.